Hey, hey everybody, I'm Sean Mullen from RampantDesignTools.com and today I'm gonna to show you how to create your very own role transition in Adobe Premiere Pro. That's right, we're creating role transitions today and then when you're happy with it, I'm gonna show you how to make your own preset so you never have to animate again. You can just drag, drop, and go. How awesome is that? Um, I'm using uh, Adobe Premiere CC 2017, but you can pretty much use any version that you'd like. Uh, some of you might be like, well, hey, wait a second. Um, I think you've done something like this before. Well, I've done some bumps and shakes, which you can see over here, and I've done frame rolling, which you can see over here. Um, uh, similar techniques, but different. And again, like I, I said before, I'm gonna show you how to make your own transition and then save it for later. All right, so. Let's get started. Let's go under here under File, New Sequence. Okay, I'm doing a 1080p timeline. You can work in any resolution that you like. Go ahead and hit OK. All right, so what are we doing? Well, we're gonna transition from this shot to this shot. So let's go ahead and drag this one onto layer one and scooch it in just a little bit, like so. All right, and then this is gonna be layer two. And as you notice, it comes with an unwanted audio track. I don't need it. If you need it, go ahead and keep it. I'm gonna go ahead and right click, hit Unlink and highlight the audio and hit delete. All right. So for ease of use and for you know making things simple, I'm just gonna do everything at one second increments. So let's go ahead and click over here where it says playhead position and turn this zero right here to a one. And then hit M for marker. And then go back and change the one to a two. And hit marker. So I've got nothing and marker one's at one second, marker two is at two seconds. So I now have the basis of my animation. All right, so normally in, in our tutorials, you'll see me animate the actual layer itself, like here, and I'll just start adding effects or whatever. I don't want to do that. I want to build this on an uh, adjustment layer so I can move it to wherever I want, whenever I want. So how do I do that? Well, if I go under File, New, Adjustment Layer, no bueno, it's not there. I can't do it. You have two options. One, you can option drag this up and basically duplicate the layer, right click, and turn it into Adjustment Layer. Now, if I turn these all off, it literally is an Adjustment Layer. It's an empty layer. My problem with that is it still retains the naming uh, of a video clip so it looks like you think it's a video clip, right? Uh, I don't know why you'd work this way. I don't work this way. I'm sure there's a reason. Uh, there's obviously a reason. It's in there, right? I don't think they'd implement something if they didn't think anyone was going to uh, uh, not use it. Uh, so you, you're welcome to do this. I don't like it, so I'm going to erase it. I just had to show it to you because uh, you know someone's going to be like, well, wait a second. I know for a fact you can turn a video layer into an adjustment layer. But So how did I do mine, right? Let's go over here to the project window, go under File, New, Adjustment Layer. As long as you're highlighted here in the, in the project window, you'll always be able to make an adjustment layer. New, Adjustment Layer. Hit OK, and I'm going to name this My Adjustment Layer, so we know it's the one I just made, right? OK, so let's go ahead and drag My Adjustment Layer into the timeline and make sure it lines up right here with the first marker. We're checky. All right. And just cinch this up, it doesn't need to be so long. All right. Cool. Let's grab layer two and just drag it somewhere here in the middle between these two markers, like this. Okay. And so here is, I'm just put an out point here and I'm going to loop it, like so. All right. This here is the making of our transition. It starts with this layer, boom, and that's it. So we're trying to cover up the fact that this is essentially a jump cut. So the roll effect is covering up the fact that you're literally just cutting to the next shot. So let's go ahead and highlight our adjustment layer, go over to your effects window, and in the search box, let's look for offset. This is the basis of our effect. You'll find it under video effects, distort, offset. Go ahead and drag that to my adjustment layer. Now you might be saying, hey, I don't see my effects controls. So go ahead and hit shift five and whammy. Right up here are your effects controls for your adjustment layer. And if we go all the way down here, bing, offset. So how does offset work? Well, it's just basically, uh, it continues to roll in one direction or the other, right? So if you do, if you adjust this one, it's gonna roll left to right, right? Don't. And this one right here, up and down. Now, uh, because we wanna do a film roll, we're gonna go ahead and adjust this value, hit undo. Let's go ahead and make a, as long as we're at our first marker, like this right here, so like that. Go ahead and make a keyframe by clicking right here on the stopwatch for shift to center to, right? And let's go to our next marker. You can do that by doing shift M to go to the next marker. And to go to the previous marker, you can do command shift M, right? On the, I do not know the PC keystroke, so if you do, go ahead and leave them in the, in the comments right now. So I'm gonna hit shift M, go to my second marker. And now I'm gonna adjust this value right here. Now if I pull it down, it's gonna continue to roll, right? The more rolls in this one second, the faster it goes. So if I just do something crazy like this, I mean, this is insane, and I roll it back, it's gonna go brrrr. That's insanity, right? So let's go back here and hit reset. Let's be a little bit more realistic. So if I pull this down to one, 
it's going to be just as rid ridiculous, but in the opposite direction. So it's going to be like, oh, yeah, we don't need that in our lives either. So let's go back here and let's go ahead and adjust. That's one roll, two rolls. Let's do at least three here, right? And what I like to do is I like to make sure that I'm zoomed in and roll this down just to make sure. See, there's a little bit of frame line here. So you always want to make sure that you're actually touching the end so you're not going to get some weird jump cut. And there you go. Cool. All right. I'm going to go back to 50% coolness. So if I roll this back, zzz, cool. We have the makings of a roll transition. Now there's a couple of issues for me. Number one, you can still blatantly see when that jump cut happens. And uh, the whole point of this transition is to, clear, uh, is to cover that up. And then of course, too, when the roll ends, bam, 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 it hits this brick wall. And if you've ever seen any of my tutorials, you know I hate linear keyframes. So let's go over here to our keyframes that we just made and drag select over the last one, right click and change it from temporal interpolation to from linear to ease in. Roll it back and it should have a nice soft landing. It's like, ah, right? Ah. And if you're like, well, that's cool, but I think it starts off a little too abruptly, you can go back to the first keyframe and do the same thing. You can drag select it, right click on it and change it to ease out. Hmm. So whatever you like. I like that. Cool. All right. So what's next? If you just want the roll, you're done. Uh, you know, I, I don't necessarily agree that that's the complete effect. As a matter of fact, if you look over here and you roll back, I'm seeing what looks like blurring and definitely a glow to me. So let's go ahead and keep that going. Let's keep making this thing a little bit more polished than just an offset. All right. So right here in the middle, right where our layer two jumps in, let's go ahead and go over to effects and make sure our adjustment layer is highlighted turn off offset and do a search for directional blur. You'll find it under blur and sharpening, directional blur. Go ahead and drag it to my adjustment layer like so. And you'll see it over here in the effects controls. And let's go ahead and, and turn on the stopwatch because we're right here in the middle. This is where I want the most amount of blur to happen, right? Go ahead and click the stopwatch for blur length. And let's put it at something ridiculous. Let's, let's make it 300. Okay, that's a thousand, whoops. All right, so let's go back to our first marker like so. First, and then go ahead right here, and right where it says reset parameter, go ahead and hit reset parameter. It's basically zeroing it out. You could have just typed in zero as well. And then we'll use this next keyframe to take you to the very last keyframe right here, and we need to zero this out again. So you can type in zero, like so, or you can reset parameter, like so. Let's roll it back. Looking cool. Now I have a personal pet peeve against uh, linear keyframes, so I'm gonna drag select this and Hit ease in, right? And so it's like zzzz. And now here's where you adjust things to taste. This middle keyframe right here is where the most amount of blur happens. If I want that to happen sooner, it'll go really blurry really quickly, zzzz, and then slow it down. Or if I want the, the amount of blur to happen longer, take longer to get to it, it'd be the opposite. It'd be like zzzz, and then it'd be like a very quick end. See, so I like, so I like to put this keyframe in the middle. All right, so zzzz, cool. Well, we're getting really close here. We've got uh, a roll and a blur, so what's next? We need a glow, and we don't really actually have a glow, uh, per se, in Premiere built in. So how do we get around that? Well, let's go ahead and go to our effects window, get rid of that search, and type in brightness. And under color correction, you'll see brightness and contrast, and go ahead and drag that to your layer. And once again, find your middle keyframe, because this is where the most is uh, most uh, glow is going to happen, and drag your brightness to as far as it'll go. I'm going to put it at 100, and I'm going to make a keyframe right here, more checky. And then I'm just going to use these arrows right here, the go to previous and go to next, to go ahead and, and uh, uh, change my animation. So I don't want my brightness to be 100 at the start, so hit reset parameter, turn it to zero, and then go ahead and hit next keyframe twice, and reset parameters again. Again, I could have just hit zero here as well. Rolling it back, I should now have a roll, a blur, and a glow. Awesome. It's getting there, right? What did I say about my pet peeves, though? I got to be honest to myself. So, boom. Highlight it, right-click, ease in. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this one, right-click, uh, ease out. I'm just going to keep tweaking these because this is what I like to do. You can, you can uh, adjust these to taste. I'm going to turn this into, let's see what happens. Uh, let's see, let's do continuous bezier, and we'll turn this into a continuous bezier. Let's just see what happens, right? So we get something that we like. Love it. Awesome. 
Cool, so now we've got ourselves our very own custom role transition. And let's say I'm super happy with it and I wanna have this available to me at any time ever and I don't ever wanna to have to do this nonsense again. I don't wanna animate, it takes too long, whatever it happens to be, what do I do? Well, go over here to your effects when controls. Remember last time I showed you how to make a preset, you highlighted the effect, you right clicked and you hit save preset, right? That was because we only had one parameter. Well, how do you do that if your effect is offset, directional blur and brightness and contrast? Do I make three presets? Well, you could, there's no reason though. So go ahead and highlight offset and go ahead and command click offset directional blur and brightness and contrast like that, right? And with them all selected like that, go ahead on any of them, go ahead and hit right click and hit save preset. Now you're going to want to label this so you know it's yours, right? So I'm going to call this rolling with my homies. And I want to ch uh, check the kind of uh, uh, preset I'm going to, uh, I'm going to need. This is scale. So it's going to apply those values across the entire duration of the adjustment layer. We don't want that. This is a transition. So obviously I want my animation to start at the end point. So, and I can go ahead and save myself a little description, like put this on your end point, yo, like that and hit okay. Right? So now I've got a preset and you're like, Balderdash, I don't see a preset, you're lying to me. Well, no, no, relax, it's all good. Go ahead and close that out. And I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this adjustment layer. And under presets, I'm gonna twirl this down. Oh, rolling with my homies. Well, how do I use it? I need an adjustment layer, right? So first things first, go back to project window, drag my adjustment layer anywhere that you'd like. And then go back to effects. Under presets, make sure you twirl it down, rolling with my homies. Drag that over your adjustment layer. Move the adjustment layer to start with the marker and just roll it back and we have ourselves our timeline that with our transition there. How awesome is that? The other cool thing is you don't have to use this as a transition. You can move this adjustment layer anywhere. I'm gonna move it all the way over here, right? And, and now, I'll turn loop off. Now it just happens wherever you put it, right? That's the beauty of putting this on an adjustment layer. So you can use it as a transition or you can just use it as a roll effect. If you're just doing something and you just want some kind of a stylistic effect, you can do whatever you want. But the great thing is you can put it right here and we're Jackie, we have ourselves a transition. So that's it, I just showed you how to create your very own uh, custom roll transition in Adobe Premiere Pro. And of course you can save it for later as your own preset. And uh, well, if you follow this tutorial and all the other ones that we've just released, you can make a whole batch of presets for yourself, you know? And that's, uh, a perfect time to let me tell you about a little thing I made called Premiere Essentials, which is uh, was made in-house and it was designed for our in-house productions. And uh, we thought that uh, it would be useful and we uh, released it to the public for only 29 bucks. And it's a couple hundred presets of all kinds of things, you know, blurs, shakes, bumps, vignettes, uh, frame bouncing, frame animation. I mean, all kinds of stuff that we use all the time for our client projects. And it's only, like I said, it's only 29 bucks. But because you sat here and spent your time with me uh, listening to my tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and kick you down some love because we got nothing but love for each and every one of you. Um, go ahead and go to PremiereTemplates.net. That's where we put all of our Premiere Pro stuff, our, our presets and our templates and our project files. Go ahead and go to PremiereTemplates.net. I'm going to give you 20% off on top of the already low prices of these things. They're not going to be more than 29 bucks right now. They're either 19 or 29 bucks for whatever it is that's out there. And um, you know what? We like that. But I'm going to go ahead and give you 20% off on top of that. So go ahead and enter the coupon code RUNRAMPANT, that's R-U-N-R-A-M-P-A-N-T, and you'll get 20% off of anything that you can find at PremierTemplates.net. Again, I can't thank you enough for spending your time with me. I really appreciate it. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. We love hearing from each and every one of you. We love hearing you call us, email us, send us a, a smoke signal, pigeon, carrier pigeon, whatever, however it is you like to communicate, hit us up. And uh, thank you so much. Please do not forget to subscribe, to like, and to share. We run on love, people. These tutorials are free. I got nothing but love for you. So do me a favor and share this with your friends and family. Tell your neighbor about us. Heck, even get, have your dog give us a like. All right, thanks so much. My name is Sean Mullen from RampantDesignTools.com. I will catch you later.